This, what's really sad about it is I, I pray for the president all the time, and I tell him that I pray for his safety and that of his family. I think now we have to pray for his health, because this was a very serious meltdown on the part of the president. Okay, so there were no video cameras rolling to truly capture this meeting derail, but Democratic witnesses say it was a new low. The White House did not dispute their accounts. Joining me now to talk about all of this is John Loudon, political strategist and former Republican state senator in Missouri, and Kelly Hyman, Democratic strategist and trial attorney. We thank you both so much for joining us. It's good to see you. Kelly, I want to start with you thank here you. because you know how the expression goes, boy, I'd really love to be a fly on that wall, especially in a meeting of this nature to truly know exactly what happened. So you didn't have to rely on one person from one party, one person from the other party to say who had the meltdown, who didn't have the meltdown. In this case, Pelosi says the president had the meltdown. The president says she's the one who had the meltdown and needs help fast. I, who looks worse in this situation? I, you know, I think our country looks worse in this situation um, because it's really sad that we have something like this. It's kind of like a third grade fight between two people. We need a president in our country that's not going to divide our country, but you know, is going to unite our country. And that's not what we have right now. I mean, it's really a shame. There was a bipartisan agreement that Trump shouldn't have pulled out the troops, um, but yet he did it. So as you said, I would have loved to have been the fly on the wall um, to see what, exactly what happened. But we're worse off in America, and it's affecting us, not only here, but also um, internationally as well. John, same question to you. Uh, which side, who looks worse here? Because uh, besides who it is who had the meltdown, the president says that Speaker Pelosi and Chuck Schumer stormed out. Well, sadly, I don't know how you uh, can ever have a good faith negotiation with somebody when uh, you've got in your back pocket the, pocket the plan to impeach the person. Uh, the, Nancy Pelosi has had a, an impeachment plan, fill in the blank for what reason, uh, since they uh, took over in 2018, since, since she regained the, the speaker's seat. So everything she's doing is uh, obstruction. This is, uh, this is uh, grown out of the whole resistance movement. It's just another extension of it. So when she tries to pull out something like all roads lead to Putin, I mean, that, that is uh, the quintessential um, pot calling the kettle black because this is the party. I mean, the Trump has been so tough on Putin, tougher than anybody, uh, way tougher than Obama. And they keep trying to play out this Russian narrative. And uh, when they were using the Russian angle, and I don't, I know, I don't want to get too far down that road, but hmm. that was such a low shot to keep harping on that Russian thing. And I think she had uh, whatever uh, retort um, well deserved. Kelly, your response? Well, I only unfortunately heard part, part of, of what okay. he said. Um, so on the bits and parts of, of what he said, I, you know, I would strongly disagree um, that. <laughs> Just you on know, general principles. The, well, also the fact that the, you know, that the president caused his own in, in, in impeachment inquiry. I mean, we have to look. And now he's basically saying, <laughs> yes, it was quid pro quo. I mean, and we have to look at that and look at the transcript. And there, I think it's important to three um, key things that we need to take out of the transcript with, with um, Trump talking to the, the president um, is, is of Ukraine, is that he said that U.S. was very good to Ukraine and that Ukraine wasn't that good to the U.S. He asked for a favor. Mm -hmm. And then thirdly, he asked yep. that the uh, president investigate uh, Biden. John? Yep. And, and, and the factual inaccuracy is that Biden is not President Trump's opponent. He's Elizabeth Warren's opponent. Biden has a history of not making it through primaries, uh, presidential primaries. So uh, this, this whole premise is that Trump was taking after his political opponent. It's not his political opponent. And even if it was, there is absolutely nothing wrong, uh, or, or let me rephrase, there is nothing that the Democrats haven't been doing uh, like crazy colluding with the Ukrainians, Russians, everyone else to get dirt on President Trump. So for them to turn around and say, wow, the president's trying to get dirt on his opponent just really falls pretty flat. All right. So let's talk about some of today's events other than the backlash from yesterday's meeting, because today you had the president's acting White House chief of staff, Mick Mulvaney, who gave a news conference and, and he spoke about this a little bit. He, he raised more than a few eyebrows because he said the president did not withhold military aid to Ukraine to force an investigation 
into the Bidens. He admitted that, he said, but he did say that the aid was actually withheld to get Ukraine to investigate whether elements in Ukraine tried to influence the 2016 election. Now, reporters pushed back a little bit. They said that this, too, equated to a quid pro quo. Let's listen to what Mulvaney said. We do, we do that all the time with foreign policy. We were holding up money at the same time for, uh, what was it, the Northern Triangle com countries. Get over it. There's going to be political influence in foreign policy. Okay, get over it. Should everybody get over it, Kelly? Absolutely not. I mean, this is this is an outrage that someone would say that we need to, to get out of it. I mean, foreign government should not interfere in our election. Every person's vote should count and every... Um, it should matter of how you vote and what you vote for. So on principles, I mean, this is this is um, shocking that he would say this. John, uh, again, though, I mean, uh, go ahead. You were laughing as, as she was answering. So please yes. respond. It, it's the puritanical double standard. I mean, no, it's not. the Democratic Party was all over the Ukraine colluding uh, in our election. So that's where the clear evidence is. And the ambassador uh, was trying to, uh, uh, it was part of it. She was right in the, our ambassador to Ukraine was right in the middle of it. So for you guys to suddenly turn around your side and say, wow, it's just horrible that somebody be working with foreign government. It's like, uh, I'm shocked there's gambling in Casablanca in, in this casino. I mean, it's just, it, it, it so falls flat. And by the way, again, this whole premise is that somehow uh, Biden is Trump's opponent, and he is not. He is a candidate in the Democrat primary. There can only be one, and it's not going to be Joe Biden. And everybody knows it, know except that. maybe Joe Biden. Oh, absolutely. Joe Biden has no shot. Next year is the 100th anniversary of women's suffrage. There's no way the Democratic Party is going to let a white man win the primary. He has zero chance. All right. So John just said there's no way the Democratic Party is going to let a white man win the primary. Your response to that? Um, I, I find that <laughs> statement kind of upsetting. I, I think that the, the best candidate sh will, will win the primaries, and it's up to the people. I think that the people's votes should highly matter, and that we'll see what ultimately happens, whether, you know, who it may be. Uh, do you think it's a matter of, at this point, because you, you, you have Bernie Sanders who's touting the, the endorsement, talking about the endorsement of, of AOC, members of the squad who, who are lining up behind him. I, is it going to come down to just how far... To, to the left, Democrats want to go. You know, I, I, I don't. I don't think that. I think that they're going to um, think of a candidate that's going to serve their best interest. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we know one thing for sure: Trump is only serving Trump's interest, and so we don't have a president serving our interests. So ultimately, <laughs> the voters are going to decide who they feel is the best for the. For All right, their we we have to leave it there. Kelly Hyman, John Loudon, thank you both so much for being here. <laughs>